All right, so we're on this slide here. What we have is we've got our menu slide and it has a hotspot. We click the hotspot, we come to this slide, we want to zoom in, and then we want to zoom out. So we need to do a few things. The first thing is we're going to leverage the zoom region feature. So you go to insert, click zoom region, and you can see that I've got a zoom region. Now I can just size this up so it fits on the slide and you can size it up any way you want to. So we've got our zoom region here. And uh, what we want to do is preview this. So let's preview this. And you'll notice when we preview it, the zoom region, it's already zoomed in and now it's going to zoom out. So when we first get to this slide, remember we have a hot spot. We're going to click, we get to the slide. We actually want it to zoom in. The reason it's not zooming in is because the zoom region's right here butted up against the start of the slide. So let's just move that out a little. Now when we preview this, it's going to start, it's going to zoom in, and then it's going to zoom out. So we've got our zoom in working fine. Now what we want to do is we want our zoom in to pause. And the way we pause that is we put a trigger on here, and the trigger is going to be pause the timeline. Now the couple of options you have, you can pause the timeline when it reaches a certain point. So you can say when it reaches two seconds, or you can pause the timeline based on a cue point. I like to use a cue point because if I need to make adjustments, I can just drag the cue point and the trigger is always going to work to that. So let's create a cue point. Just move your playhead anywhere. It really doesn't matter. Hit the C key or you can right click and choose, um, well, I created a cue point, but you can right click and choose create cue point. So we have a cue point. I'm going to move it over here to about three quarters of a second. And we're going to put a trigger on here. What do we want to do? We want to pause the timeline when it reaches this cue point. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do we want to do? We want to pause the timeline of the slide when the timeline reaches cue point number one. Now what you're going to see is it's not going to zoom in all the way. And the reason it's not zooming in all the way is because the timeline's paused because it reached cue point one before the zoom effect was done. And this is why I like to use cue points because ah, I messed it up. Let me go ahead and just nudge the cue point over to about one and a half seconds. Now when I preview this, it's going to zoom in and it pauses. Works perfectly. I'm happy. If I use the timeline trigger, then I have to go in there and modify the timeline and play around with it. With the cue point, I can just click and drag it and I'm done. Okay, so we've got the timeline paused. Now we need to get the timeline to unpause so it zooms out and then create a trigger to have it go back to the menu slide. So let's go ahead and do the first thing is we want to create a trigger that releases that pause so it resumes the timeline. So we probably want a button. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert a button. So I'll just make it really big here. I'll put a, an X in the button here. Um, and then I can make it a little smaller. So this is good enough. Um, and you can see I can size it. Now when I'm clicking on my zoom region, now that's going to be really big, right? So when we actually look at the button here, let's make sure the button is visible on the timeline. So we're going to have it pop up right as it pauses. So this button is going to be really big, right? Now if your server makes a lot, you might like big buttons, but uh, we want smaller buttons. So let's go ahead and make this a little smaller. Now if you hit the control key and your scroll on the mouse, you can zoom in. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, this looks fine for me. Now what we want on this button is we want a trigger and we want the trigger to be resume timeline. So we have a trigger on the slide that pauses the timeline when it reaches the cue point. So it's stopped. Now what we want is a button here that we can resume the timeline. So let's add a trigger to the button. What do we want to do? We want to resume timeline. Choose our timeline, the slide, when the user clicks on the button. So um, let's go ahead and preview this. And what we have is it zooms in, click, zooms out, and um, it just sits there. What we want to do is when this is done zooming out, we want to jump back to that menu slide. So a couple things we want to think about. We don't need the slide to be six seconds long. So we can go ahead. We can actually do all this. So maybe we all, we pause it and then we want it to zoom out. 
and then we can take the button and we can pull the button and it could um, disappear and maybe we do something like this. So it's going to zoom in, pause, click the button, zoom out, and then at the end of this we want it to jump back to the menu slide so we can select one of the other areas. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do we want to do? We want to jump to slide our menu slide when the timeline ends, the timeline of that slide ends. So what we should see is this zooms in, pauses, we click the button, it it pause, it resumes the timeline, gets to the end, zooms out, and then it should jump to the menu. So let's go ahead and preview the scene. And sometimes you'll have some tweaking to do here. So that's why we build the first slide and then once it's all done we can just duplicate it. So let's go ahead and zoom in. We've got our button, click, it zooms out, and it jumps to the slide. So it actually worked really well without a lot of tweaking. Now you notice when I click again it's not doing anything. And the reason it's not doing it is because we already activated that slide and so it's just going to go back to the slide assuming that we're done with what we wanted to do. So we need to go to the slide properties and let's go ahead and when revisiting the slide we want to have it reset to the initial state. Hit OK. Now when we preview this scene we can zoom in and out. So it jumps to module 1. I'm going to click close and then it jumps back to menu. Module 1, close, it zooms out and back to menu. So you can see how that works. Then all you have to do is basically link to the different slides. So what we need is we need duplicate slides and we need to set our trigger. So we'll do that in the next tutorial.